His best friend was sent on a secret mission. They're both being captured. We're gonna be executed. This time, Michael Dudikoff isn't looking for revenge. Got the slime down like dog with no mercy. He's looking for complete annihilation. <laughs> Michael Dudikoff, David Bradley, American Ninja 4, The Annihilation. Hey folks, this is a Matt once again, and uh, as you can see, I'm still going with the American Ninja series. Talked about the first one, bare bones DVD, unfortunately, but I saw this film as a kid, still enjoy it to this day, American Ninja. Of course, I've also talked about American Ninja Two my favorite of the series, The Confrontation. And American Ninja 3, which... I liked it, I can watch it. It has a lot of problems. Steve James makes it very watchable, but... of the first three films, this one's definitely the weakest. But, uh... I know this next film, The Annihilation, which I don't own don't want to own. I know there's some people who like this film and if you like the film that's cool. I looked up some reviews. Uh, I know they liked it because they said it was better than part three. A lot of people say it was bar better than part three because Michael Dukov comes back. They said that it seemed like a little bit more of a serious storyline or that the David Bradley's acting was even better in this film and you had Michael Dukov coming back that the action scenes, or like the villains, the ninjas, were not as pussified as the third film. I'm just reading what they said. But American Ninja 4, The Annihilation, um, if you like the film, that's cool. I think it fucking sucks. Um, I remember as a kid being a big fan of these films and seeing the pro, like a, a picture American Ninja 4, I remember the picture, I'm going to try to remember to put the, the cover at the beginning of this video, either before or after if I find it, the trailer to it. Uh, you know, Michael Dudikoff and David Bradley side by side, Michael Dudikoff with his sword, uh, David Bradley with the nunchucks, and I'm like, okay, I saw these three films, I own these three films, I have these three films, I enjoy them, uh, okay, I'll look forward to this. I don't know if I saw it when I was a kid and just completely forgot about it or not. But saw it once again. And it's strange that Michael Dudikoff, Dudikoff came back. Maybe because he needed the paycheck, which, although this is probably a low budget, so he probably didn't get a paycheck. I don't know, maybe he just didn't do part three. Maybe he would have done part three if, I think, once again, I think he was doing the other film, River of Death. So maybe because he had some free time, so he decided to do this film. Um, but once again, it's directed by Cedric Sundstrom, who did American Ninja 3. And once again, he did a bunch of shit I've never even heard of. Uh, like I said, it starts Michael Dukov from American Ninja 1 and 2. Michael Dukov, and also stars David Bradley. Uh, and again, I'm like, okay, you know, both of them are together. Maybe if it's them teaming up and doing more stuff. Of course, it's the sad thing is there is no Curtis Jackson. As in, what year was Part 3? I only said that because I'm trying to think how many years it was from Part 3. 80, 89? 80, must have been 1989. Hmm. So, I don't know, I mean, I, it was only a year after Part 3, but still, I don't know if he was busy with another film, or his health may have been deteriorating, because I know he passed away around 1993, I believe it was, it was, uh, it was some type of cancer, I think pancreatic cancer, but I'm not sure, probably mentioned it before in the video, I know it's a form of cancer, which is too bad, and, uh, I can definitely say Steve James is missed in American Ninja 4. But okay, getting to the film. 
I do think it sucks. First off, it has the title of the Annihilation. Whenever you get a title of the Annihilation, it's kind of like Resurrection. Nine times out of ten, the movie's going to suck if it has that kind of title. And the Annihilation, um, like more combat Annihilation, which I don't like. Um, another crappy sequel. But this one, like, right off the get-go, I, I love how the title, American Ninja 4, The Annihilation, I love how, if you watch, The Annihilation, it's like written in this red cursive against this blue backdrop that's so fuzzy that you can't even see the fucking The Annihilation. Like, literally, it's like one of those, you know those fucking things that, uh, looks like nothing and you gotta relax your eyes? and supposedly see a hidden picture, you almost have to do that with the fucking title of the Annihilation. It's almost like they put it there, and yet they don't want you to read the fucking thing. And you get this Delta Force commando team running from these ninjas. Some of them get killed. Some of them try to get on a boat and get captured. Then we introduce David Bradley, once again playing Sean from Part 3. And he has a character, which I have to think they would, this would have been Steve James if he was able to do the film. Either he would, I'm not sure, he either would have been the David Bradley cared, David Bradley, you know, the friend who's been kidnapped, and Joe has to go rescue him, or he would have been, quote, the black guy. This actor's name is Dwayne Alexander, which I guess he's been in a couple films. I think he was in Sci Fighter with Roddy Piper. Don't quote me on that. But anyway, David Bradley's friend is getting married, but they get a call, so they have to... Him and his friend, his friend has to leave his woman at the altar. And basically, they are informed. First off, when the fuck did David Bradley's character become part of the military commando CIA shit? In part three... All I know about part... All I know... Is that this guy? He's just a martial artist. There's no mention of him ever being in the military slash CIA slash fucking FBI, MIA, whatever the military. There's no mention of that. It's just him, a martial artist. But now all of a sudden he is in the fucking military slash CIA slash whatever bullshit. I'm like, okay, I don't, that came out of nowhere. That's kind of like if you did act so fully, but then, oh, he was in the military, huh? Like, what the fuck? You know, it doesn't really compute. Uh, but him and his buddy are told that there's this uh, British colonel played by James Booth. Which, I know he, unfortunately, he's passed away by now, but why am I looking at it? This is part two and three. Sorry, I, I usually have something in front of me. But I know he, I, he used to be in a few old-time films. I know he was in that film Zulu back in the day with Michael Caine. He's the main bad guy. Very over-playing it, over-chewing it. Chewing the scenery so much, he's going to you know, be a fat ass. Oh, I'm sorry, he just, I'm sorry. I think he did a bad job acting-wise as a villain. Um, wasn't intimidating, just very goofy and it's over chewing the scenery in his British accent. But anyway, apparently there's this nuclear device that can fit into his suitcase and then all of a sudden there's ninjas. And the people we saw at the beginning was a commando team to get the nuclear bomb that can fit in the suitcase. But there were ninjas that stopped them. Um, and they say that there's a few prisoners and the rest of them will be burned unless they're paid. Um, and a few things made me laugh in this scene. Number one is when David Brown and his friend have to get there, their password is for the informant to know that it's who they are, is the Big Blue Wrecking Crew. <laughs> really? The Big Blue Wrecking Blue? It's a blue Blue. The big blue wrecking crew. How about this? The blue balls. <laughs> that would be the fucking name. The blue balls of death. The blue balls fall. Really? The big blue wrecking crew is your password? I love David Bradley. He goes, you cannot send them. This is not a game. Those were ninja. <laughs> I know other B-movies, but still. 
You have to laugh when you have to laugh. I mean, this is not a game, sir. Those were ninja. <laughs> no shit. Yeah, I know. But the two parachute in. And then Foreman's kind of this kind of kid who a little bit is like, some, in the beginning, he's like, is he trying to do fucking Tony Montana? Is he trying to do that? But that kind of goes away. But at the beginning, I'm like, is he trying to do fucking Tony Montana or some shit? But then basically the kid takes him to a bar and they're going to get thrown out and like the big thing is David Bradley does like an arm twist to this big guy. I'm like, don't tell me that's it. And then he like gives a punching kick to the big guy and hits like two or three other guys' ass. Um, they talk to this guy who owns the bar. Um, the cops come. And I swear, the James Booth character makes like a gay move on the kid. I'm not kidding. Because I swear, he sits by, like, David Bradley and his friend hide. The guy who wants the bar gets shot. James Booth, the villain, the British prick, sits down next to the kid. Puts his arm around him. And literally does this. I swear, he has his arm around him, so his hand's here. And he does this. He does this, I swear. I swear to God. He takes his shirt and goes, and he gets near him, I'm like, is he going to lick his ear, put his tongue in his ear, what the fuck? I'll, I'll put that right here, if I remember, and then don't you tell me, what the fuck is this, what the fuck is Ah, oh, my, my young friend, you're not going to. Try my well known patience, are you? Hmm? Tell me. Where are those two strangers? I'm like, what are you doing? What the fuck is this? And then, um, they jump out of the closet and they jump out the window and they run. The kid shows them to this woman who is part of Peace Corps, hides them in the mortuary, they escape. David Bradley does some shit where he prepares his bow and like he, he prepares his bow and it's so fucking silly because he, he raises his bow in the sky. Like, who the fuck, what the fuck are you doing? He does the splits. He's doing his bow. Like, what the fuck are you doing? There's ninjas out there. Look this way. Put your fucking head down. And he puts his bandana. I'm like, is this the OK Corral? Why are you putting your fucking bandana like that? And does like, uh, what was it like? This bow. Does like, <laughs> or like this, or this, or fucking this. Might as well. And like then he, he kills some ninjas, like he said some ninja stars, some arrows. Um, really some some bad choreography. But then the funniest thing, like I thought I was watching fucking Kung Pao into the fist. If you don't know what Kung Pao is, look it up, but because David Bradley and his friend and the, the woman, they get captured because they get together, I swear to you, a tiny fucking neck just thrown at them. <laughs> Just thrown on him. Zoom! <laughs> what the fuck was that? I swear, like, little tiny nip. <laughs> what the fuck was that? I swear, like, little tiny nip, and then they're captured. And pretty much David Bradley, throughout the most. For most of him, he's just a prisoner. So he does nothing. I'm like, wow, okay. Um, and like, they take him prisoner, and like for some reason they put David Bradley there, they beat on him a little, and then David Bradley, little decent martial arts, you know, kicks some of the ninja's ass, and then they dart him. 
then he passes out. And I'm like, what was the point of that? Why did the bad guy do that? Like, he lets him kick his own guy's ass? When he had a guy with a dart gun? I'm like, what the fuck was the point of the... I guess because the point was that we didn't get an action scene. Okay. And by the way, these bad guys, it's definitely one of those old jokes. You know, like a priest and a rabbi and a nun. Or a priest, a rabbi, and a monk going to a bar. Because one bad guy's an Arab. One's a British prick colonel. And then you got ninjas. It's like an Arab, a British prick, and a ninja going to a bar. What is that? An Arab who wants Allah and Mecca and a British prick colonel and ninjas. How the fuck does this add up? It's like literally, let's like let's take every stereotypical bad guy. Um, we got the bad colonel um, who hates Americans. We got the Arab terrorist with the nuclear bomb. And we got ninjas. I know. The plots for these, I know, are silly, I know, but this just fucking took the cake for me. I think if I was more entertained, then okay, it's a silly plot, of course, but if I'm not entertained, then I'm gonna pick it apart. <laughs> and I wasn't entertained. And then, like, uh, they're prisoners, and they whip the, the black, his black friend, um, the Dwayne's, Dwayne's character. Then he makes a prisoner. He said, lick my shoe. And, uh, by the way, a good friend of mine, Mike, OCP Communication, did a great rant on this. I love the fat one. He said that the guy says, lick my shoe. Lick my ass. And that's what I felt, too. I felt the guy could lick my ass. So, do the whole rim job thing. Get a fucking, you know, brown trumpet right up his cornhole. Or as they call the Rusty Trombone. Because this guy, which is a shitty villain, and David Bradley's character had a little bit of the beginning, but now he's going to be a prisoner until the very like last 10 minutes. Because here we are at the about halfway mark, well, about 45, 44, 45 minute mark, and we're finally introduced to Michael Dukoff. That's another mistake, the fact that he comes in about halfway through the fucking movie. You promote it with these two fighting together, and your main, pretty much your main star, Michael Dukov, comes in halfway through the movie. And he's a Peace Corps guy, he's teaching the kids the environment, you know, he teaches the school. And a guy comes in saying, your friend, Sean, and I love the line he says, told you last time, it was the last time. <laughs> I don't, it reminds me of the Hot Shots too. You're the men to go in to get the men who went to get the men. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I don't know, but that was supposed to be funny. And isn't me? Or are they trying to do a Ramble three? Because you have a guy who's done stuff, but now he's trying to make peace. Whether it be Rambo and Rambo three with the monk, so him peace corps in the school, and he's called in to rescue his friend and he's got to do it for his friend and there's even a scene where he's kind of you know hunched over looking off in the distance about the kind of like Ramble 3 Ramble did in Ramble 3 you know when he when he was in the hammock like, are they trying to do Ramble 3 in this? I don't know it's like are they trying to do that? Ah, it just reminded me of that for some reason. Although Rambo 3 is a fuckload better. And when the fuck was Sean, David Bradley's character, Michael Dudrov's character, friends? They were never friends. They show how the fuck they were friends. They never, it, it never even comes up how the fuck they were friends. Not even a line dialogue, oh, I used to know him in the military. Oh, uh, Curtis Jackson introduced me to him. Like, it was never even brought up. Which was stupid storytelling. So he goes over, he meets that same kid again, that kind of kid. But then this kid takes Joe, he's gonna take him to these World War rejects, which I'll get to, but um, they're driving, and this is probably one of the scenes I actually liked in the film. 
the driving and a ninja gets on the car and Michael Dudas here just punches right through the windshield. Phew! And I like the fight. It's by the car and Dudas has some good moves, uses a sword well, fucks up a bunch of ninjas. Actually entertaining scene action wise. Some decent choreography. One of the only good scenes in the movie in my opinion. But then they move on to the World War. They look like World War rejects. They look like they just came off a, you know, post-apocalyptic world. You know, a dimension, whatever. It's like, you know, you look to your left, it's Escape from New York. You look to your right, it's Warriors of the Lost World. And behind them, it's Warriors of the Wasteland. Um, they look like fucking, you know, 2020 Texas Gladiators or the Bronze Warriors or all that kind of shit. Like, I don't know why they look like these World War rejects. Um, and I also don't know why the kid brings Joe to these guys, but yet he didn't bring Sean and his friend to these guys. I'm like, these guys are going to help Joe. Why the fuck didn't the kid bring David Brown and his friend to these guys in the first place? You know? Why didn't he bring... Sh why didn't he bring... This guy and his friend, the Dwayne, that's the real name, Dwayne, to these guys first. Why didn't he do that first? But no, now he does it with Joe. But he couldn't do that first for some reason. Once again, shitty script. Just a shitty script. I know all scripts are not why you go see American Ninjas. I know that. But here it's just, it becomes very boring. Okay, it's an hour at least an hour into the film and the only I see maybe well they were Bradley fighting in the woods with against ninjas I mean I don't think it was good but it gave me chuckles and but and then Joe fighting uh, Michael Dutra fighting two scenes but then um, they let him in and then Michael Dutra has to beat up like these two or three guys World War rejects and then one guy says, okay, you know, you can come up. He, he earned his right to talk to me. You know, he won fair and square. Then talks about how basically Michael Dutra wants these guys to create diversion while he sneaks in. But they need some engineering plans. I guess, like, they say tunnels and shit, but tunnels never come into play. But I guess, like, engineering, like, water, water-based engineering... Because I know it did ultimately deals with Michael Dukov climbing this cliff and running up, well, I guess, into the sort of sewer type system. So I guess that's the whole plans. So he has to pretend like to be a priest at his party, sneak in, grab him, leaves. Um, and I love the fact A, he gets all his shit. Like he gets ninja stars, he, he sharpens his sword. Looks at his sword, and he never fucking uses it. That's like when Rambo 4, remember Rambo was, you know, kills as easy as breathing, you know, with his machete. He uses it. Imagine he did all that shit and he never uses it. You'd be like, what? No, here, he gets his sword ready, and he never fucking uses it. Because he takes everybody on hand, with bare hands, and bare ass, and bare everything. Bare nuts. Means he pulls the nuts down and blah, 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 like bongos on their head. No, he doesn't really, but still. I'm trying to be funny because I know this review is going too long, maybe too boring for people, but fuck it. The funny as fuck thing. Once again, I'm going to try to put this clip at the beginning. So you probably already saw it. Is he's going, Joe goes up the river. I swear. Well, you're going to see the footage. He fucking... I did not even edit it. I swear to God, I did not edit it this way. He walks. There's a fucking hole. I don't know where it came up or he dug it. He jumps in. Edit. He jumps out like he's fucking Superman. He's Ninja Superman. And then he jumps in with his normal clothes. And he jumps out with a fucking ninja. <laughs> what the fuck? He jumps in... Dun, 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 Ninja Superman! Wow. 
with that. Ah, I. He doesn't do that, but that would have just made it better. But he jumps in, and then he jumps out. I'm like, you must have a fucking telephone booth. Dun, 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 dun. Hello, I come from a plant far away. He fucking might as well. It was just fucking stupid. Fucking stupid. He jumps into a fucking hole, and then this ninja Superman. The editing. Fuck. So he sneaks into a can while the World War III just come in to fuck everything up. And he, as he's going through in the tunnels, I guess there are tunnels, I should say, the sewer system and stuff. Um, he fucks up some ninjas, including this moment where he catches a fucking arrow with his teeth. And here's a guy behind him and goes, <laughs> and stabs a guy with a fucking arrow in his mouth. And... The prince is about to be killed. And I love this scene too because first off, he decides to wear fucking uh, a yellow jumpsuit now. But the thing is, I don't know why he changed because he puts the yellow jumpsuit, but he doesn't put on a fucking mask. He doesn't put on a fucking mask. He just has the, the yellow jumpsuit, and his face is total open. And he walks outside, and he stands next to a ninja, who looks at him and goes, like that, or like that. And I'm like, Michael Dudoff, oh my god. Like, everybody can see him, and he's just watching the prisoners. And I'm like, oh, I didn't even fucking uh, mention, I didn't even mention before that, I gotta mention this. He thinks he rescues Sean, but it's a fake Sean. It's a fake David Bradley. Because he starts fighting them. And I love, like, in this scene, for some reason, this fake Sean has to scream. Bah! What are you doing? Let's go! I swear to God, he fucking sounds like that. What are you doing, Sean? It's me, it's Joe. I swear to you, he screams. I'm like, what the fuck are you screaming for? And then, like, a quick little fight, and then stabs David Bradley, and then, oh, does the Mission Impossible. Dun, 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 dun. Fake face. And I'm like, and then basically, uh, Michael Dudrop says, Cobra Dead. Which I, I remember, I think in the first film it was the Ninja Magic. I'm like, really? Ninja Magic? I'm like, what the fuck? Like, I guess they did it to, but that wouldn't mean, so they knew he was coming. They knew he was coming? Why they put a fake Sean in there unless they did not know that Joe was coming? But yet they have no more backup other than one guy. And then he walks out in the fucking open space with no fucking mask and no one does anything. Ninjas look at him and go, Oh, he's wearing yellow. Everything's fine. I'm like, Does that make any sense to you? So you have a fake Sean, and how the fuck do they do this Mission Impossible shit? What the fuck? Would, how the hell did they do that? Oh, ninja magic. My ass. You want to see some magic? I'll pull right out of my ass. And then feed it to you. You fucking piece of shit movie. But it makes no sense. So they knew that Joe was coming? But yet they have one guy there who has some Mission Impossible bullshit and it's like, this is like, I, I think, I could fucking see the fucking stream writing. The streamer is like, well, we got these two guys, we want them to fight, but they're good guys, why would they fight each other? Hey, wait a minute, Ninja, in, um, 1993, I have these fake, uh, Mission Impossible bullshit. Let's do that. Doesn't make any fucking sense. But that way, we got them both fighting. And still kind of a half-ass fight. And really, it's the only scene that the, you actually see them on screen together. And that's like, what, the 80-minute mark or some shit? 90 minute mark? Eight, I mean, and once again, he goes in the fucking open space with no fucking mask on, and then just look at him and go, hey. Hey, 
but what the fuck? And then he casually walks as this motherfucker, this poor guy, he's being roasted on fire. And Michael Dudikoff is not like, well, oh my god, or oh shit, or He's like, just casually walking up. Oh, that guy's getting burned? He's one of our men? Oh, okay, that's cool. I'm like, is that even affecting you at all? Take your time, Mighty Dorkov, Mighty. Take your fucking time walking up. So the guy dies getting burned, one of the prisoners, and take your time, Dorkov. Mighty duty. Then he does a phew, and based on ties, and that's where all hell breaks loose, where the road warrior finally, they were kicking everybody's ass, but then for some reason it took them all this time to get to that point. And then basically just random people fighting. Um, and it's almost like they're trying to do the ending of the first film, where you get, instead of the army fighting ninjas and shit, it's the road warrior rejects fighting the ninjas and shit. Um, because you have the black guy getting a grenade launcher or bazooka by like Steve James had and shooting the helicopter and blowing up the helicopter. Yeah, black guy blowing up a helicopter just like the first film with some explosive device. It's a bazooka, it's a grenade launcher. Um, and this guy tries to fight and he can't fucking fight. Uh, Dwayne, where the fuck, Alexander, he couldn't fight for shit. Uh, they were Bradley. He's okay. I remember one time saying he sucks, but I know that was, that was kind of harsh. But he's okay. He's okay. Um, but yeah, he's like everybody's fighting, and Michael Tudrop doesn't really do shit except fight the main ninja, which they say the super ninja, but there's nothing super about him. So I guess it's maybe the guy picked his own name. Who looks like a fucking half-assed version of Shredder. Like, you watch the coming out of the shells tour Shredder. Take away all the horns and shit. Give him an eye patch and no no weapons on his wrist. That's a half-assed fucking $5 Fisher Price version of Shredder. That's basically with an eye patch. You know, it's fucking, like, his silver shit looks like, literally, it's styrofoam or, or one of those, uh, it looks like metal silver, but it's like, I don't know what the fuck you call it. It looks cheap as fuck. That's what it does. It looks shitty. And then, Martin Dudas kicking this guy's ass pretty fucking easily. Even though, decent choreography. And then, basically, David Bradley, he's just kicking the shit out of that James Booth British prick. That's basically what it is. It's like no match. The guy can't fight. So he kills him, and Michael Dudkoff, I actually like this. He kicks the ninja, and then just pulls out your name and throws it and turns around. Boom! I thought that was pretty funny. Uh, and then basically he gives his yellow jumpsuit to the kid, that kind of kid, and walks away and says, Sean, did you find me at the school? And walks away and you get the end of the fucking movie. And it went, damn it, this thing went to 30 some fucking minutes. I spent that long, probably more with the clips I put in. Too long for fucking Minion Ninja 4. And that least shit. But hey, that's what I do. I talk about shit that no one fucking cares about. American Ninja 4, The Annihilation. I know, once again, I know people are like, dude, I should have said this before. I know people are going to be like, dude, it's American Ninja 4. What do you expect? Nothing. I didn't expect anything, but. There's a lot of low-budget action films that are pretty good. Gary Dance did films like Rage and Riot. Mark Dacascius did films like Drive. You know, American Ninja 1 and 2 were low-budget. Even Mar A lot of people like this more than American Ninja 3. That's cool, but... At least American Ninja 3 has Steve James. Here, I guess if people say, well, at least it had Michael Dukoff. Yeah, halfway through the fucking movie. But anyway... Granted, the American Ninja films are not known for their great smart plots, but this one just was fucking stupid. I mean, Sean is all of a sudden part of the CIA or military, which we never even knew before. Supposedly him and Michael Dukov are friends, but they never explain 
how the fuck they were friends or knew each other at all. It makes no fucking sense. That's some exposition I would actually like to know. The villains are lame. The British prick is uh, chewing the scenery too much. Uh, the villains is like... They picked them out of a hat. We need a, a colonel. We need a, oh an Arab. And ninjas. Shit. No Germans or Russians. Maybe next time. They should... Surprised they didn't have like a Nazi midget and uh, a Russian... That would have been all the cliches. German midgets are not really cliches, but that made it different. <sighs> shitty story. Right, you could say the other films have shitty story, but I'm picking on this movie because it's not entertaining. So, shitty story. Uh, David Bradley fights a little bit at the beginning, then basically is a prisoner for most of the fucking movie until the last couple minutes where he does a couple kicks. And beats up a guy who can't defend himself. Um, Michael Dukov, your star, doesn't come in until 45 fucking minutes in the movie. Um, lame ass supporting actors that I didn't really care about. Uh, a score that didn't really do nothing for me. Uh, I missed George Clinton from American Ninja. Did he do three? I know he did two. Says he did three. You know, I you know, two is his two was my favorite score as well as my favorite movie. But even three, I think, had a better score than this. This score, which I'm looking at IMDb, because I read something about the score. Or was it another movie? My, no, it might have been the next movie then. might have been another movie, actually. Or it might have been American Ninja 3. Fuck. Can't remember anymore. So you got Michael Dewdrop not coming in until la till the halfway mark, which is stupid. You got... Nothing going for it. Other than one decent fucking action scene with... Yeah, that was actually American Ninja 3, the score. I said the American Ninja 3 score was good. I forgot. I fucking forgot. I know it's been a while. I forgot I said that. The score for American Ninja 3 was mainly uh, the score to Avenging Force. I fucking forgot about that. Although, granted, I still like the score better than the one in this film. Okay, so I better wrap this up because this is going on like 40 minutes and this is way too fucking long. I know, I know, but hey, what can I say? It's what I do. Imagine next time when I talk about American Ninja 5! Which wasn't even supposed to be American Ninja. That's, wh that's why sh David Bradley plays a character named Joe. I think it's Joe Castle, so it's not Joe Armstrong from part 1 and 2, but still. Anyway, I'll get to that. But, by the line, American Ninja 4, The Annihilation, as in annihilate your brain after seeing this film. Do like the minute by pew. Michael Dutrop, your lead, comes in halfway through the fucking movie. David Bradley, he's so, he's okay, so-so. His fight scenes, I don't know, you don't, I don't buy him 100%. Um, you know, weirdly enough, I think Michael Dutrop handles the action scenes better than David Bradley. Maybe it would have been better if those two actually teamed up, like, in the beginning and did stuff. Like, uh, I'm not saying, like, a buddy cop movie, but I mean, like, they're both doing shit, kicking ninja ass. Kind of like what the poster and everything would make you lead to, led to believe. Um, lame villains, shitty score, forgettable score, um... Just stuff that, like, he catches an arrow with his fucking teeth, and he walks out in the middle of fucking space, open space with no fucking mass, and no one, hey, buddy, like, not, not, Mission Impossible bullshit, and Road Warrior rejects, and it, it's like a fucking parody, almost. 
They should have just done a fucking parody, like a Hot Shots type movie. Fuck me. Shitty script, bad like... Again, catching air with his teeth, walking in the middle of the fucking thing with no mask, and everybody's like, hey, how's it going? Not even stopping him, giving him a blink of an eye, and... Jumping into a fucking hole and jumping out like he's super... Ninja Superman. Yeah, it's a bad movie. So yeah, if you like the film, that's cool. But Ninja American Ninja Four: The Annihilation, fucking sucks. I'm sorry this went over forty some minutes. I didn't mean to do that, but that's how it goes. But anyway, thanks for watching, and take care, and stay tuned when I review the last one. American Ninja Five. Stay tuned, thanks for watching, and take care. Poopy did a ninja magic. You want to give me some ninja magic? Ninja magic made me forget about this fucking movie. That's okay, by tomorrow I'll forget about the movie, so. Thanks for watching, and take care. Later.